Welcome back to yet another discussion on some of the most important history topics that could find their way to your 2024 prelims examination. This video discusses a crucial topic related to art and culture. First, let's divulge the reason for taking up this topic by looking at the headlines. Art historian B. N. Goswami's work on Indian miniature painting tradition. In his work, Goswami unearthed family lineages of renowned artists who played an essential role in the development and continuation of miniature painting. So here is a look at India's miniature painting tradition and the significance of his contribution. So this is an article which appeared in the uh, Indian Express newspaper when he passed away in November of last year, that is November of 2023. So I shall take this moment to explain to you about B. N. Goswami and his contribution, the person you see on the screen. So to begin with, B. N. Goswami was best known for his works on the Pahari style of paintings. Okay, he was best known for the work on Pahari style of paintings. And Goswami quit the prestigious civil services in 1958 to follow a career in academics and research. In fact, he had authored more than 26 books on the subjects related to Pahari paintings, miniature paintings, court painters and masters of Indian paintings, among others. So he played a very important role in expanding our knowledge about miniature paintings. Why do I say so? Because Goswami in his 1968 article focused on Pahari paintings, illustrated that style of painting didn't depend on in which state they were being produced. Okay, so he said that the style of painting did not depend on where it was produced. Instead, he said that the style was dependent on the family of painters. And uh, he also went on to reconstruct the entire family networks of some of the most renowned Indian miniature families, including Pandit Siu, who worked in Himachal Pradesh, Gula and his sons. And then he spoke about Nain Suk and uh, Manaku. These were some of the family of uh, Indian painters about whom he had uh, extensively worked. And if you see, Goswami succeeded in reconstructing whole dynasties of previously obscure artists given them names and restored their identities and honor. Okay, so his main contribution was he unearthed families of painters, the styles that they espoused in miniature paintings and different types of paintings. And he himself was a great proponent of the Pahari style of painting. So I think it will be prudent of me to explain what miniature paintings are. Okay, so we saw the uh, whole explanation related to the news. Now it's time for us to look at details from an examination point of view. So for that miniature paintings are something very important. So if you see miniature art includes small size paintings uh, or engravings miniature the name itself says small size. Okay, it includes small size paintings engravings and sculptures with a long history dating back to the prehistoric period. Okay, so compared to mural paintings, these miniature paintings are small in size and scale. Okay, compared to uh, mural paintings, these miniature paintings are small in size and scale. Okay, so these miniature paintings, what do they portray? They portray stories from epics like Ramayana, Mahabharata, Bhagavad Gita and uh, uh, Devi Mahatmya. Okay, and they also showcase events like hunting, festivals, household scenes and court scenes. So during the medieval period, okay, we find illustrated manuscript painting and miniature paintings. Okay, miniature paintings greatly flourished during the medieval period. So if you see Buddhist and Jain religious texts were illustrated with colorful pictures, such as uh, the Pala illustrated uh, manuscript and Jain illustrated manuscript paintings. Okay, and uh, these Hindu texts like Bhagavad Gita, Gita Govinda and others were also illustrated with uh, beautiful paintings. And if you see miniature paintings were created on specific themes and they often uh, were seen in series, such as portraits of royalty, uh, one could find Akbar Nama series, okay, like that. Okay, so uh, these were the important uh, importance of miniature paintings. Okay, now I hope you got an idea of what miniature paintings are. Okay, they are small size paintings or engravings and sculptures with long history dating back to prehistoric period. Particularly, they flourished during the medieval period and they espouse themes from Ramayana, Mahabharata and uh, other major Hindu texts, as well as they portrayed hunting festivals household scenes and court scenes. Okay, so now there are four uh, schools of miniature paintings. Okay, four schools of miniature paintings which flourished in 
four different regions or for that matter different regions first is the mughal school okay mughal schools of miniature painting flourished in uttar pradesh and bihar okay and then you have uh, pahari school from the hill states of north india and then there was this rajasthani school from western region and then you had deccani school from the deccan plateau region okay so these were the four schools of miniature paintings now let us look at the techniques and materials along with the themes that were uh, portrayed in these paintings so if you see miniature paintings involved minute and delicate techniques okay the earthly and concrete colors uh, often that were thick were used okay earthly and concrete colors that were thick were used gold and silver foil or liquid were utilized to add richness to the paintings okay and these artists paid great attention to brushes and they often created their own depending on the intricacy of the work so various surfaces were used for painting okay paintings can would be seen on cloth bark of trees uh, handmade paper and wood with handmade paper being prominent okay and then coming over to the themes that they espoused so personal paintings and royal portraits were common themes so stories from ramayana and mahabharata were depicted across different schools then childhood stories of krishna that is uh, bhagavata purana and tales of devi in devi mahatmya as well as incarnations of mahavishnu in uh, dasavatara were portrayed okay so the poet jayadeva's geeta govinda focused on radha and krishna was a favorite theme that many of these miniature artists took up and court scenes of emperors such as humayun's court scene akbar's court scene jahangir and shah jahan's court scene as well as hunting progression and festival scenes were beautifully painted by the rajasthani and mughal artists okay and moreover these mughal artists if you see they depicted the stories of emperors in works like babar nama akbar nama humayun nama and jahangir nama fine so uh, apart from this uh, the uh, naika feature paintings featured the poems of uh, keshava desa and then pahari painters focused on beautiful landscapes and seasons and then the rajasthani painters portrayed heroic stories of princes and princesses so these were the various themes that were basically portrayed in these paintings now coming over to the four schools of paintings that we already saw we are going to look at them elaborately first is the rajasthani school of miniature paintings okay so when you talk about rajasthani school we first have to look at mehwar kalam so heroic paintings in the original rajasthani style were produced at mehwar court under rana uday singh and rana pratap so keep this in mind mehwar kalam heroic paintings was produced in mehwar court under two great kings rana uday singh and rana pratap so when rana amar singh accepted mughal supremacy the paintings from udaipur and jaipur court started reflecting the influence of the mughal school okay and then the next is bandi kalam so bandi uh, this is uh, located near mehwar bandi was a princely state so it depicted the splendor of plant life in intricate detail okay so this uh, bandi kalam style beautifully blended hindu and mughal elements then the third is kota kalam so under raja umesh singh a mature style of rajasthani painting developed in the princely state of kota so these paintings were greatly influenced by the mughal style okay so th these are the three uh, varying uh, styles of rajasthani school of miniature paintings okay mehwar kalam bandi kalam and kota kalam then coming over to the mughal school of miniature paintings so under mughal school we have sub schools as well we have akbar school jahangir school and shah jahan school first let's look at the paintings exposed by akbar so if you see akbar was a pattern of art and literature okay uh, he also went on to the extent of establishing a um, workshop for artists in fatehpur sikri so artists worked in a team with different roles such as outlining uh, figures landscapes and colors and if you see persian masters like mir said ali khwaja abdus samad taught the artisans in fatehpur sikri workshop so remember these two names mir said ali and khwaja abdus samad they were the persian masters who taught at fatehpur sikri workshop okay and manuscripts like akbar nama then um, uh, rasna rasna nama and anwar e uh, suail were illustrated by coat painters 
okay and coming over to his son jahangir so jahangir uh, had his own workshop and he showed a deep interest in painting from his early days okay so jahangir developed the portrait style in mughal painting and uh, he patronized artists like farooq beg from central asia so when i say jahangir what should come to your mind the portrait style was uh, basically carried forward by jahangir okay and in fact ustad mansur served as the court poet of jahangir and then comes shah jahan school okay so when you look at shah jahan school shah jahan basically was an emperor who expressed his interest in painting while overseeing the construction of notable structures like the red fort jama masjid and taj mahal okay an excellent painting from his time is the portrait of shah jahan himself okay so that's the significance of mughal painting so i've included a few images here as well so this is the portrait of shah jahan okay from the time of shah jahan okay and then there are other such uh, court chronicles court paintings that you can basically find here on the screen from the mughal period the next one is the pahari school of miniature paintings in which uh, b n goswami was a pioneer okay so what is this pahari school so pahari paintings emerged during the 17th and 18th centuries in kashmir and the surrounding hill areas of punjab and uttar pradesh okay so these paintings basically represented the hill regions and uh, they are collectively known as the pahari paintings okay so first we look at this area called basoli okay so the earliest pahari paintings are from the time of raja kirpal singh from basoli okay so after the decline of the mughal empire artists received patronage in basoli and they depicted themes from books like uh, rasa manjari geeta govinda and bhagavata purana and then coming over to this place called guler okay in guler under raja dalip singh of guler a style similar to basoli emerged with evident influences of basoli style in terms of trees and structures so later the guler school was influenced by mughal artists okay and then comes the kangra valley so in kangra valley under the patronage of raja sansar chand a fresh face of art flourished so raja sansar chand with his childhood interest in painting patronized artists and amassed a large collection of pictures and then coming over to jammu so from 1700 onwards jammu began producing beautiful paintings so here the king was raja balwant singh okay and he had employed the renowned painter nain suk who created remarkable artworks in the aulo style as he hailed from them and then finally we have chamba so chamba is another hilly state and this was ruled by kings like prithviraj and raj singh so due to prithviraj's wives origins in basoli the basoli kalam style traveled to chamba okay so this was the significance of the pahari school of miniature paintings so you have to remember these places where the style basically evolved over a period of time okay and then coming over to the deccani style of miniature painting so if you see the deccani school is derived from the mughal miniature school okay so the bahmani states known as deccani sultanates included bijapur ahmednagar uh, golconda bidar and later hyderabad okay so all these states were in political confrontation with neighboring vijayanagara okay so early deccani painting show influences from ellora murals mebar and uh, malwa miniature styles so persian elements also have a strong presence in deccani kalam so under ibrahim adil shahi the bijapur school of paintings thrived particularly in uh, portraiture of adil shahi and the rangmala series which are highly esteemed okay so ahmed nagar has a series of paintings depicting queen chand bibi the ruler okay and then you have uh, old uh, golconda and uh, bidar produce miniature style portraits of nawabs and courtiers okay this is not old konda this is golconda and bidar produce portraits of nawabs and courtiers in miniature style that's what is depicted here on the screen so each of these styles varied markedly from one another okay so this is about the miniature paintings so uh, what are the other allied areas that you are supposed to concentrate on with regard to paintings you have to concentrate on prehistoric rock paintings okay so if you see prehistoric rock paintings are ancient paintings found on cave walls and rock surfaces dating back to thousands of years okay so these paintings basically uh, depict 
human life, animals, hunting scenes and rituals. And they provide insights into early human civilization and their artistic expression. And then you have the mural paintings. So mural paintings are large scale paintings created directly on walls or ceilings. Okay, so these paintings, uh, you can find them in temples, uh, then in palaces, public buildings, and all these mural paintings showcase religious or historical narratives. So murals can be found in various styles across different regions of India. Then you have to concentrate on the bark cave paintings. What are these bark, bark cave paintings? They are a group of nine caves in Madhya Pradesh, known for their ex exquisite mural paintings. So these paintings found in bark caves, uh, they basically date back to the 4th and 5th century. So these uh, caves depict Buddhist themes, Jataka tales and scenes from the life of Buddha. And then the most important one, Sitanavasal cave paintings. So Sitanavasal basically is a site in Tamil Nadu. Okay, Sitanavasal basically is a site in Tamil Nadu and it houses ancient Jain cave temples known for their stunning fresco paintings. So these paintings dating back to the 7th to 9th century CE uh, depict Jain religious themes, mythological scenes and intricate patterns. Okay, and then coming over to the Anaimalai cave paintings. So again, Anaimalai caves are also located in Tamil Nadu. So these Anaimalai caves feature beautiful rock cut Jain paintings. Okay, so these paintings date back to the 9th or 10th century and they display vibrant colors and indicate uh, intricate details and they depict Jain deities and scenes. And then comes the Pala school of miniature paintings, another important thing that you are supposed to concentrate on. So Pala school of miniature painting flourished in the eastern regions of India during the Pala dynasty. So we all know that the Pala dynasty ruled from 8th to 12th century CE. Okay, so these paintings often depicted Buddhist themes, religious figures and narrative illustrations with intricate details. And then comes the Bengal school of art. The Bengal school of art emerged in the late 19th century as a response to the Western academic art. Okay, so this Bengal school of art basically uh, were led by artists like uh, uh, Abhinindranath Tagore and Nandalal Bose. Remember these names, Abhinindranath Tagore and Nandalal Bose were the ones who espoused this Bengal school of art. So this Bengal school of art aimed to revive Indian art forms and express nationalist sentiments through traditional techniques and Indian subjects. Okay, and then you are supposed to concentrate on Renaissance or Revivalist painting. So this Renaissance or Revivalist painting emerged during the late 19th and early 20th century. Okay, so these paintings, uh, if you see, aim to revive and re-establish Indian art traditions. Uh, they try to draw inspirations from ancient Indian art styles, folklore and mythology. Okay, and then you have the Madras School of Art, another important area you're supposed to concentrate on. So this Madras School of Art was founded in the 1850. It was founded in the year 1850. It played an important role in the development of uh, modern art in South India. Okay, so that's about Madras School of Art. And then you have the Madhubani, Madhubani style. Madhubani painting is a traditional folk art form originating from Bihar. Okay, so this style uh, was all about colorful paintings depicting scenes from Hindu mythology. Then it depicted nature and also everyday life. Okay, and they use natural dyes and unique brushwork. And then you have the Kalamkari. So Kalamkari is a traditional art form from Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. And it involved hand painted or block printed textile paintings. Remember Kalamkari was hand painted or block printed textile paintings. So Kalamkari showcased elaborate designs and it often depicted mythological stories, legends and motives from nature. And then you have Kaligat paintings. All these paintings came at a very late stage, but are nevertheless very important from an examination point of view. So these Kaligat paintings originated in Kolkata. They depicted scenes from everyday life and also they portrayed Hindu religious themes. So these paintings are basically characterized bold lines and vibrant colors. Okay. And then you have the Varli paintings. So Varli paintings are from Maharashtra and Gujarat. They are from the, uh, they are something that was practiced by the Varli tribe of Maharashtra and Gujarat. Okay. It's a tribal art form. Okay, so this tribal art form, Varli, used geometrical shapes, uh, usually white on the background of reddish brown. Okay, they used geometrical shapes, usually white on a background of reddish brown to depict scenes of daily lives, rituals and folklore. Okay, and then the Patachitra style. So Patachitra uh, is a traditional art form from Odisha. 
It involved intricate scroll, scroll painting depicting religious and mythological stories. Okay, so these Patachitra uh, paintings depicted uh, day-to-day -day religious and mythological stories and they were created on cloth using uh, natural colors and they were filled with intricate details and elaborate ornamentation. So these are the areas that you are supposed to uh, revise when you come across anything related to paintings. Okay, now we'll look at a couple of uh, important questions. Okay, from an examination point of view from this topic. Which of the following statements is or are correct? Nihal Chand was an eminent painter of Mewar school of Rajasthani painting. Sahibuddin was an Indian miniature painter of the Marwar school of Rajasthani painting. So, which among these options are correct? In fact, both these options are wrong. The correct answer is neither one nor two. Why? Because this Nihal Chand was a painter of the Marwar school of painting. Okay. Nihal Chand was a painter of the Marwar school of painting. And uh, Sahibuddin was an Indian miniature painter of Mewar school of painting of Rajasthan. Okay. They have interchanged it. You have to be very careful with the wordings. Nihal Chand was basically a painter of the Marwar school of Rajasthani painting. Sahibuddin was an Indian miniature painter from the Mewar school okay just one word is different and things will be completely gone okay so um, this is the answer the next one in Rajasthan miniature painting the skin color of the human figure is fairer black brown or blue the correct answer is brown okay so in Rajasthan the miniature paintings of human figures are brown in color so in Mughal paintings, the human figures are fair. Okay, and the color of divine beings is blue in color like Lord Krishna. So men in Rajasthan miniature paintings usually wear traditional clothes and turban on their head. Okay, so this is how uh, characters were portrayed in these paintings. So which Mughal emperor's court painters migrated to other provincial courts in Rajasthan? Was it Aurangzeb's court painters, Akbar's, Jahangir's or Babur's? Correct answer is Aurangzeb. So, if you see, Aurangzeb was the emperor of India from 1658 to 1707. Okay, so this Mughal king uh, had his court painters who migrated a lot to the provincial courts in Rajasthan. Why? Because you know pretty well Aurangzeb did not encourage painting. So, a large number of these painters started migrating. Okay, thus during his period, there was a sharp, a sharp decline in the activities of paintings okay so uh, that's it from our discussion for the day so for aspirants taking up prelims 2024 we have covered most of these topics in our lakshya 2024 program okay we have covered most of the topics in the lakshya 2024 program so you can go through them by following the link in the description so for laying your hands on our optima optima cards you can contact the number in the bottom of the cards okay and we also run a current affairs session in the weekend. So for up-to-date knowledge on current developments, you can join our weekend sessions. So for more such video, like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.